This is a case of a 78-year-old female with past medical history of end-stage renal disease, aortic valve stenosis, atrial fibrillation, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, CVA, and three-year history of chronic type 3 dissection. The patient originally presented a number of months prior with back pain and chest pain with CTA findings demonstrating a stable false lumen despite contrast filling. The patient opted to forego surgery and continue medical management at the time. The patient subsequently returned with severe chest and back pain with repeat CTA demonstrating rapid aneurysmal expansion of the false lumen, likely secondary to compromised calcification of the true lumen allowing for aneurysmal filling. Cone beam CT was performed with image fusion to identify the landmarks for stent graft deployment. The rupture was noted to be approximately 7 cm distal to the takeoff of the left subclavian artery. The diameter of the thoracic aorta just distal to the left subclavian artery was found to be 36 mm. Thoracic and arch aortogram correlated with the CT findings of active extravasation into the false lumen. These findings correlated well with preoperative imaging. Next, a thoracic endograft measuring 37 by 37 by 182 millimeters was brought in from right groin access and deployed under fluoroscopic guidance into the thoracic aorta. The proximal extent of the endograft was just distal to the left subclavian artery. Repeat angiogram demonstrated persistent filling of the false lumen. This was thought to be secondary to proper opposition of the thoracic endograft distal to the subclavian artery, secondary to a high calcium burden. A reliant balloon was then introduced and balloon angioplasty was performed of the proximal, mid, and distal portion of the endograft. This resulted in significant improvement, but still had trickle flow into the false lumen. At this point, proximal extension of the graft was deemed appropriate and a 40 by 40 by 62 millimeter extension cuff was brought into the field and deployed with partial coverage of the left subclavian artery. Repeat angiogram demonstrated no flow in the false lumen and successful exclusion of the false lumen. The patient was also found to have good flow through the right innominate, left common carotid, and left subclavian arteries. Postoperatively, the patient was found to be neurovascularly intact with significant resolution of her chest and back pain.